Hello, welcome to McCann 2040 Solar Mechanics. So this is the first video of this course, McCann 2040. So it is a series of videos developed by a group of HKUST students under the University Education Innovation Project, UEI. This is tutorial zero, introduction. The videos come from a team of senior year students from MAE department. And our intention is to set up necessary supplementary materials for students to learn after the class. One reminder is that it is not the substitution of the regular teaching activities. Even though we have those videos, we still cannot get rid of the lectures. So please attend the lectures as usual, your tutorial as usual. And in case you don't understand the things, you can try to get more insightful stuff from our videos. Besides, although we try to cover everything in this course, but you know the syllabus may change year by year. Therefore, one thing I want to alarm you is that our syllabus may differ from your syllabus. Okay, so some some course material that your professor is teaching may be missing from our tutorial videos so beware of this also after taking this course you are cautiously invited to join us in case you can obtain a grade of a minus and above and if you have um, sufficient english proficiency you can also be the speaker of the videos so currently our team has only five members so in case you can join us we can make more videos for other courses about this course so this course is solid mechanics mccann 2040 it is a continuation of mccann 2020 statics and dynamics however in this course we don't like dynamics we don't want dynamics okay so the statics concept will be extremely important for this course. What is static? We've already learned some basic equations. Uh, that is the sum, the, the sum of force on x, y, and a set axis are zero. And the, the sum of the moment on the x, y, set directions are also zero. In this course, so we, as we know in statics and dynamics when we analyzing a structure we consider we consider the beam maybe you have a structure like this we consider those beams as rigid bodies that means no matter how much load you apply on the material there will be no change of shape or change of length on the structure however in this course such assumption no longer holds okay we don't assume the things to be rigid because we are going to consider the material deformation and the change of shape when the load is applied on the material so now let's go to the first concept we are going to uh, speak in this very first video moment of inertia so most of you have learned moment of inertia in uh, physics 1112, general physics 1. So in that course, the second moment of inertia of mass is taught, which is given by mR squared. So consider a piece of mass, and this is the center of Mars, and you have a differential mass element, dm, located at a distance r from the mass center. Then the moment of inertia of this piece will be di equals to r squared dm. Then, in order to find the moment of inertia of the whole piece of the mass, we will sum up the moment of inertia of all differential mass elements on this piece of mass. Therefore, the moment of inertia will become i equals to integral of r squared dm. However, in fact, in this world, we are, we have two kinds of moment of inertia. One is the second moment of inertia with, with the distance term squared. 
But actually, we have the first moment of inertia when we talk about area. So in physics 112, the general physics course, we learned about the mass moment of inertia. When talking about the area moment of inertia, we slightly change the thing that we consider. We consider a piece of a piece of area instead of mass. And for the first moment of inertia, it is given by a area times the distance with power 1. So the power 1 means the first moment of inertia. And similarly, you can see that for the second moment of inertia, they are similar that for the distance term R and D, they are squared. So this is the second moment of inertia of area. Here I just want to have a look. So so uh, very very often when talking about the mass moment of inertia we have i equals to m r square one half of m r square etc so those two tables you don't need to memorize because um, it is not going to be tested in, t tested in this course i just want to have a very simple impression on what is the difference between the mass moment of inertia and the area moment of inertia so very often, area is talking about the, the sum of the differential area element and the mass of moment of inertia is talking about the sum of the differential mass elements. The first moment of inertia is defined in two ways. So, Qx is talking about the moment, the first moment of inertia about the x-axis. Similarly, for Qy, it is the first moment of inertia about the y-axis. y is the vertical distance of the differential area element and x is the horizontal distance of the differential area element. Or I don't say the distance, maybe the, the vertical position because y can be negative or positive. x can be positive or negative. So consider you have x-axis and the y-axis and you have a piece of area like this. So what is the first moment of inertia of this piece of region? So consider a differential area element dA and uh, its position is x, y like this, right? So x and y are both positive in this case. Then, it's differential moment of inertia, first moment of inertia, about the x-axis is given by y dA, while the differential first moment of inertia with respect to y-axis is given by x dA. In order to find the first moment of inertia of the entire piece of region, you sum up all the differential area elements and their respective positions, then it will become Qx equals to the integral, the integral, right? But it is double integral because it is about the area. Notice that the first moment of inertia concept is useful for finding the centroid of a cross section. But in this video, I'm not going to talk about it because it will be introduced in later chapters. So basically, if you want to evaluate the centroid of a cross-section, you will solve this equation and then you find the average position of all area elements. Let's have a look about how the first moment of inertia works. So first concept is that in case talking about the first moment of inertia about the x-axis, if the entire region has an axis of symmetry of x-axis. X-axis is the we so-called the axis concerned. If the region is symmetrical about this axis, then the first moment of inertia will be zero. This is because the double integration properties. For example, if we split the region into two pieces and to consider the upper and the lower regions. Then for the upper region, since we are looking for the position of every differential area element, and for the upper rectangle, 
the average position of all differential area elements is y equals to 1. Therefore, for the upper part of the first moment of inertia, it is 1 times 8 equals to 8. While similarly, for the lower rectangle, its average position of y of all differential area elements is minus 1. So the first moment of inertia of this rectangle will be minus 1 times 8 equals to minus 8. Then, finally, you sum both of them together, you get the first moment of inertia of the entire region is zero. And the one remark is that if you move your region along the direction of the axis concern, for example, if, if originally your first moment of inertia is zero and it is located here, and you move it right or you move it to the right hand side because x axis is pointing to the right hand side, right? So no matter how you move along the x direction, the first moment of inertia along this axis will not be changed. It will also be zero in, uh, because no matter how you shift this shape horizontally, it is still symmetrical about the x-axis. Next, let's talk a little bit about when we shift the region vertically. So in case we shift the whole region vertically, we know that for the entire region, the average of position y will be 1. And you know the entire area is 16. For qx equals to the average of y times the entire region equals to 16. Similarly, for the average of this shape, it is y equals to 2. Therefore, the first moment of inertia will become y times 16 equals to 32. This is some simple examples on how can we compute the first moment of inertia. Those examples shown shows that the first moment of inertia will change when it is shifting away from the axis concern. In this case, things we are concerning about the x-axis, then shifting away means we shift it vertically. And also, the first moment of inertia is just the sum of the position times the area of the all area elements about the axis. Notice that the first moment of inertia can be either positive or negative. Let's do a quick ex exercise. Evaluate the first moment of inertia of the area about x-axis and y-axis. Actually, there are several ways that we can do it. First, try to evaluate the moment of inertia about the x-axis. In order to compute it, still remember that uh, just now, we, we have a rectangular region and for this rectangular region its first moment of inertia about the x-axis is the average of the average of all differential area elements times the entire region so by similar manner we will try to evaluate the first moment of inertia of the i-shaped cross-sectional area by dividing it into simple geometries. So-called simple geometries include rectangle, circle in case it is provided. So for this simple geometry, we know that for each of them, they have an average of y, 3.5, 0 0.5, and the y equals to minus 3 for each of the regions. Therefore, the first moment of inertia will become the sum, or we still write the integral form as at the first. And we know that the integral is just the summation of the uh, position times the differential area elements. Therefore, we can write i from 1 equals to 3, because in this case, we have three area uh, with the simple geometries, right? And uh, it is the summation of average of y times 
A, their respective area, I. So it's an average of Y, average of Y, average of Y. So the first moment of inertia of this I-shaped cross-section will become, so consider the original one, it is 3.5 times 7. 3.5 is the average of Y, while 7 is its area. You can see there are 7 cells. Also, for region 2, you can see that its average is 0 0.5, while its area is 15. And for region 3, its average is minus 3, while its area is 18. Therefore, we sum them up. So it equals to 24.5 plus 7.5 minus 54 equals to 32 minus 54 equals to minus 22. For QY, there are also a lot of ways to compute it. Uh, you can also divide it into simple geometry like this. So there are five pieces. Then the QY, similarly, uh, it is similar to how we compute the QX. It is so for region 1, its average of x is minus 3, while its area is 2. And for region 2, the average is minus 0 0.5, and its area is 24. For region 3, its average of x is 2, while its area is also 2. For region 4, the average of x is minus 3.5, while its area is 6. For region 5, its average is 2.5, while its area is also 6. Then you sum those things up equals to minus 6, minus 12, plus 4, minus 6, equals to minus 24, plus 4, equals to minus 20. Actually, there is also another method to compute the QI. So, recall that this axis, x equals to minus 0 0.5, is the axis of symmetry of the entire region. Can you see that? So, in order to compute the I-shaped cross-section, you know that x equals to minus 0 0.5 is the vertical axis of symmetry. That means the average position of x of the entire region will be minus 0 0.5. Well, what is the area of the entire region? We can just count it. It is 40. Then QY is just minus 20. So the result is exactly the same to this method. Another way to compute the first moment of inertia is to eliminate the area that is symmetrical about axis concern. Sometimes it can simplify the calculation. Sometimes it does not. For the elimination method, as we already discussed just now, in case the region is symmetrical about an axis concern, then its first moment of inertia about this axis will be zero. This is why you can eliminate it. In this case, we can eliminate this area. This region is symmetrical about the lower 12 cells. Well, some of you might ask me, okay, why don't you eliminate those two, those two, those two, and those two? They are also symmetrical about the axis, right? The answer is yes, you can also eliminate it, but it will make the calculation rather complicated because you cannot directly obtain the average value of y for this l-shaped region for qx you know that along this altitude the average of y equals to 3.5 while for the lower 12 cells the average of y is minus 3 therefore qx equals to 3.5 times 4 minus 3 times 12 equals to 14 minus 36 equals to minus 22 so this result agrees with our previous result, right? For QY, similarly, we will eliminate this region. It is a T-shaped region. So this region is eliminated because it is symmetrical about axis concern. 
Then we compute the first moment of inertia. So for those seven cells, they share the common average x equals to minus 3.5. And for the seven cells in the middle, it has an average of minus 1.5. For the six cells located here, it has an average of 2.5. Therefore, the total will become minus 35 plus 15 equals to minus 20. This also agrees with our previous result, isn't it? Next, after talking about the first moment of inertia, we move to the second moment of inertia. So second moment of inertia is defined in three ways. The second moment of inertia about the x-axis is given by the, the summation of the y square. So just now, in first moment of inertia, it is just y, right? But now it is y squared times the differential area elements. Also, for IYY, it is the second moment of inertia about the y-axis. It is given by the double integral over the entire region, the x squared dA. For the second moment of inertia, there is another way to define it. That is the double integral over the entire region xy for every differential area element. Notice that we call it second moment of inertia because x square, y square, and xy are all degree 2 polynomial integrands. It is an extremely important property describes how the area elements are located away from the axis. Still remember that when you have a mass element, which is very, very far from the axis concern, then its moment of inertia will become r square m. And uh, in case the mass element is located further and further, 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 then its moment of inertia will become larger and larger, right? So moment of inertia is accounting something like this. It is accounting how um, how the mass elements of a piece of object is located away from the axis concern or the point concern. Notice that since integration is a kind of summation and you are going to sum up the y squared dA and x squared dA, notice that x squared and y squared are both positive and the differential area elements must be positive. Therefore, the summation of the positive stuff will also be positive. Therefore, Ixx and Iyy must be non-negative. While in case you are accounting Ixy, one thing I can tell you is that, okay, it could be negative, but in the future analysis, maybe uh, it is something that you are going to learn in year 3 solid mechanics. In case you are AE students, if you take the aircraft structure, you will meet it. And it can be negative, but its negativity or positivity is not important for the analysis. After talking about the first moment of inertia and the second moment of inertia concept, I'm now going to bring you some simple mathematical review on double integration. So talking about the double integration, let's do some exercise. So just now we have already introduced the first moment of inertia and the second of moment of inertia. And we have learned their expression in double integral form. Therefore, we can use those knowledge to compute some of the problems by using the double integration method. Now let's talk about the area of the entire region. For the area, it is just the double integration of the entire area for every differential area element. So it is just a piece of rubbish statement because I'm just saying area is the summation of all differential area elements. But it is it can be used to help you to look uh, to determine the integrand. So the area will become dy dx. For y, it is from minus 1 to 4. For x, it is from minus 1 to 5. Then it will become 
5 minus 1 and uh, for the integral inside it is 5 dx and eventually it will become 5 times 6 equals to 30 for the first moment of inertia about x axis qx equals to the double integral over the entire region y dA it is y dy dx for dy the x the range of y is from minus 1 to 4, for x it is from minus 1 to 5. After you evaluate this piece of integral, you will find that it is a constant. As it is a constant, we can just simply take it out. Then it will become minus 1 to 4, y dy, it is a constant, okay, times minus 1 to 5, dx. Well, it is also a constant, which is 6, and for the integral of y dy from minus 1 to 4, so we still write 6 here, it will become 1 half of y squared from minus 1 to 4. Then it is 3 times 16 minus 1 equals to 45. And for the first moment of inertia about the y-axis, it is rather similar. I will just jot down the answer and leave you as exercise as those things are just some kind of double integration method so you can do it as exercise now talk about the double integration over the circular region it is a little bit different from the rectangular region but it is rather easy for the rectangular region to recap we have differential area element equals to dx times dy but in the circular region we cannot do that we know dA equals to dx dy but in case we are dealing with circular region the double integration by using the Cartesian coordinates will become extremely difficult therefore we need to use the change of variable techniques for this circular region, its center is located at 0, 1. Therefore, we let x equals to r cosine theta and the y minus 1 equals to r sine theta so that we can construct a polar coordinate system with r axis and the theta axis like this. Then, the differential area element is no longer the x dy, and we need to calculate what is it. So the differential area element will become, so partial x y, partial r theta, equals to, so as we learned from math 2011, in order to do this, we have to find the Jacobian matrix, which is the determinant of partial x, partial r, partial x, partial theta, partial y, partial r, partial y, partial theta. It equals to, so partial x, partial r is cosine theta. Partial x, partial theta is minus r sine theta. Partial y, partial r is sine theta while partial y partial theta is r cosine theta so determinant becomes r cosine squared theta plus r sine squared theta equals to r dx dy equals to r d r d theta so R is what we got from the Jacobian matrix. So what does this differential area element look like? So in Cartesian, we know that dA is something like rectangle, uh, square, rectangle, etc. dx, dy, right? We have the length dx, dy. But for the circular region, the differential area element will become something like this, dA. So if we draw it to be a little bit bigger, it is a little bit curved, okay? So this is the R 
And uh, for this very small element of differential area, still we suppose it is very very small so that we can approximate it to be a rectangular shape or a square, uh, whatever. So this is along the ratio direction. So this side is along the ratio direction. And for this side, it is approximately, approximately equal to R d theta. Therefore, dA equals to R d R d theta. And uh, we can evaluate the double integral by similar manner, but with the change of variable. Since we already know x equals to R cosine theta, y minus y equals to R sine theta, that means y equals to r sine theta plus 1. Then we can evaluate the area a equals to the double integral of the entire region for every differential area element. But bear in mind that now dA equals to r d r d theta, then it will equal to for theta, it is from 0 to 2 pi. For r, it is from 0 to square root 8. And the dA becomes r d r d theta. Evaluating it obtains 8 pi. And by similar manner, you can compute the rest of them. Qx is the double integral of the entire region of y dA equals to from 0 to 2 pi from 0 to square root 8, r sine theta plus 1, r d r d theta. It is a little bit complicated, it is really for US exercise, but I believe you can do it if you can handle it with care, okay? So it is still 8 pi. Why? Why it is 8 pi? It is because the average of position y of all differential area elements is 1. Therefore, it is just y times a equals to 1 times 8 pi equals to 8 pi. For the first moment of inertia about the y-axis, since we know that this region is symmetrical about the y-axis, then the first moment of inertia will be 0. However, if we deal with deal it with the double integration method, then it will become qy equals to the double integral of x dA, which is this. And for the rest of them, it is like this. And I will not write down or substitute the things into it, just give you as exercise. Next, let's deal with a simple example. Instead of solving the moment of inertia numerically. Now let's try to solve the moment of inertia symbolically and uh, see whether we can get some results. By the double integration method, if we are talking about the moment of inertia about the horizontal axis, then it will become i equals to the double integral of the entire area, y squared dA equals to, so what is dA? dA is like, so this is the upper and lower limits of dx, or it is the upper and the lower limits of dy. So it is length L for x direction, and for y, it is from minus w over 2 to w over 2, y squared dy dx. Solving this double integral gives you the result w cube l over 12. It is an important result that worth you to remember because in, in case you have this result, you can get rid of using the double integration again in the future. So all the mathematical introdu introduction before is just for you to know okay, what is the maximum amount or the maximum difficulty of math to be used in this course. I believe you don't need to use any concept which is much more difficult uh, than the double integration. So I believe double integration is already the most difficult stuff in our course. 
So after you finishing this mathematical introduction, you can feel very comfortable to deal with further problems. For the circle, it will be i equals to the double integral of y squared of the entire region. And by change of variable method, we can have 0 to 2 pi, 0 to r. And we know y equals to r sine theta. Right? So the integral will become r squared sine squared theta, r the r the theta. It is 0 to 2 pi, 0 to r, r cubed sine squared theta, the r the theta. So we just absorb this r with this squared term. Then you evaluate the integral. It equals to, so take the sine squared theta out. It is a constant in, in case it is integrating with the r, right? So it will become 0 to r, r cubed the r, times 0 to 2 pi, sine squared theta, the theta. Then it equals to r to the power 4 divided by 4 times 1 half of the integral, 1 minus cosine two theta, d theta equals to r to the power 4 divided by 4 times 1 half times 2 pi equals to pi r to the power 4 over 4. So it is also an important result for the moment of inertia of a circular region about an axis passing through its own centroid. Next, we are going to introduce you the last concept in our very first video, that is the parallel axis theorem. So, we can apply the, those formula to avoid using the double integration method when we are talking about the moment of inertia about another axis which is parallel to the axis passing through myself. What does that mean? For example, for this rectangular region, we have the formula which can deal with the moment of inertia of it about its own axis of symmetry, right? But what if I'm now going to ask you, okay, what is the moment of inertia of this region about another axis and this axis is parallel to the axis concerned? that passing through itself. So in, in this case, we're going to do the parallel axis theorem to find the, the moment of inertia of it. Firstly, let's talk about Ixx. In the parallel axis theorem, Ixx equals to Ixx0 plus A times delta Y squared. Notice that delta Y and delta X can be either positive or negative it can be either positive or negative, okay? So, in this case, this entire region exists its moment of inertia about its own axis. I call it moment of inertia of itself. And the moment of inertia itself plus its entire area times delta y squared will be the moment of inertia about this axis okay so once again ixx naught is the moment of inertia of the region about itself delta y is the relative position of x naught axis relative to x axis so ixx will be the moment of inertia of this entire region about the x axis so how can we find the moment of inertia of this region, Ixx equals to the double integral of the entire region of r squared dA equals to minus 1 to 5 minus 1 to 4 y squared dy dx. And after you solve this double integration, you will get 126. But if we use the parallel axis theorem, the things will become much more easier. So the, the moment of inertia of itself is Rxx not and uh, let's see so so the W is 3 and the 
L is 6. Therefore, it is W cube L divided by 12 equals to 3 cube times 6 divided by 12 equals to 27 divided by 2 equals to 13.5. Then, the moment of inertia Ixx will become the moment of inertia of itself plus A delta Y squared equals to 13.5 plus so the area is 3 times 6 equals to 18 and uh, the delta Y is 2.5 1, 2, 2.5 right? it is area times 2.5 squared the result will be 126 which agrees with the result of the double integration method Next, talk about the parallel, parallel axis theorem of y, 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 y. It is similar except we use the delta x. So in this case, we define this to be L. We define L as the side that is parallel to the axis we concern. And now, W is like this. So now, L equals to 3, W equals to 6. By double integration method, I, y, y equals to the double integral of the entire region of x squared dA. It equals to minus 1 to 5 minus, uh, uh, sorry, it should be 1 to 4 x squared dy dx. It equals to 126 as well. And by the parallel axis theorem, the moment of inertia of that self equals to w cube L divided by 12 equals to 6 cubed times 3 divided by 12 equals to 54 and the moment of inertia will become the moment of inertia of itself plus the area which is 18 and the delta x is 2 which is 126 as well so those two results are agreed finally let's talk about ixy so different from ixx and iyy Rxy is talking about the moment of inertia about the origin. Besides, one special property that you should understand is that for a symmetrical shape, the Rxy of itself will become zero. Still, delta x and delta y can be either positive or negative. By using the double integration method, Rxy equals to the double integral. So let's observe the lower and upper limits. For x, it is from minus 1 to 5. For y, it is from 1 to 4. 1 to 4, minus 1 to 5, x, y, dx, dy. Evaluating this double integral will get the answer of 90. So by using the parallel axis theorem, i, x, y equals to i, x, y naught plus a times delta x times delta y. Where we know that for the rectangular region, the Ixy of itself is 0. Therefore, the Ixy is 18 times, so what is delta x? Delta x is 2, while delta y is 2.5. So it is 18 times 2 times 2.5 equals to 90. So this result agrees with the result of the double integration. So now let's do a very simple summary. So in this video, we introduced first and second moment of inertia and their applications. So record their formula for first moment of inertia about the x-axis. It is the integral of y dA. Qy equals to the double integration over the entire region of x times the differential area elements. Ixx equals to the double integration over the entire region y squared times the differential area elements iyy equals to the double integration over the entire area x squared times the differential area elements ixy equals to the double integral over the entire region xy times the differential area elements also we introduced the double integral of rectangular and the circular regions. It is dA equals to dx dy. And for circular region, dA equals to r dr d theta. 
For the parallel axis theorem, we have three formula that you should remember. Ixx equals to Ixx naught plus A delta Y squared. Iyy equals to Iyy naught plus A delta X squared. Ixy equals to Ixy naught plus A delta X delta Y. So this is all for this video. Thanks for watching. And also you can find the table of contents in the description of the video so that you can go to the section you want to understand by clicking the link on it. Besides, you can find the handout of this tutorial from the link in the description of this video below. So hope you like it. See you in the next video.